heard about this new book signing down the street, Author and Attic? Ah, the one with Paul Coelho, he's coming. Uh, so I love, love you because, because the entire, entire universe can conspire to help me find, find you. you. And that's exactly oh. how I feel about you. Hi beautiful souls, it's Tan here again today with another Sinistry video. Today we're doing Venus in Partners Third House. So I have made an introduction video to Sinistry. You can click links up above and the description box below to watch. So you can kind of get an idea about what the third house represents in your Sinistry reading. So Venus in Sinistry is where you, um, you bring the Venus person, where they bring their sense of pleasure, their love, their sort of more pleasing characteristics and their need for relationships and commitment um, to another person. And briefly, the third house is that coffee shop. If you've watched the uh, Sinistry introduction video, it's the coffee shop where the two people come and they um, have a ch chit chat and a good conversation going on. So, when Venus comes into another person's third house, there's going to be a good mental rapport between you guys. And the Venus person really has a nice and diplomatic way of encouraging the house person to give their opinions, to talk, to communicate, and when the house person does that, they kind of feel they are being received well by the Venus person, that they're not being judged for their ideas, and it just kind of flows really harmoniously between um, the two of you. Venus is likely to feel pretty comfortable and relaxed in the presence of the third house person um, and feel pretty comfortable and relaxed in their interaction. So this is going to be an easy friendship or companionship or a student-teacher relationship. That's really good. That's a really good one. Yeah, for that. Um, and there's going to be good communication depend, you know, with all else being equal. If there's some pretty harsh Saturn with the Venus person's Venus, something like that, conjunct or square or opposition, then okay, this can kind of change that a little bit. So this placement doesn't necessarily suggest any kind of romantic or sexual interest between the two people, but if there are other things going on the chart that does suggest a romantic or sexual interest, then this one kind of just adds a really nice layer um, to the relationship wherein the two people um, can always, throughout the relationship, kind of have something to talk about. <laughs> so the intimacy between the two of you are, is going to be fun, and funny even, and it's going to be lighthearted mostly. It's not really going to be that kind of heavy, intense, um, magnetic kind of an intimacy, but it will be a harmonious, nice, fun, bubbly, um, a little bit of an exciting kind of an intimacy that goes on here. And there is really this feeling that the other person is going to accept you and there's like less fear of rejection involved with Venus placed here. So there's going to be a lot of um, the Venus person communicating in a very romantic way to the house person or they may just use their words in a way that sounds very sweet and very romantic you know and express their love verbally to the house person and maybe vice versa. So yes because there's a shared um, intellectual interest and there's a shared uh, mental there's a mental connection here that's why the two people with this placement can always find something to talk about within the relationship um, it's really open and an easy kind of interaction so you guys are likely to want to talk about the same things and so that's how the relation the conversation keeps going because you just share the same interests um, you know how like sometimes one person is like let's say really interested in um, history let's say and they, they kind of you know their mind is involved in that their interests are involved in that and they want to talk a lot about that but the other person is more interested in let's say uh, technology and they kind of want to talk about those kinds of things and then it's kind of like okay well I want to talk about this or do you want to talk about that but that doesn't really happen here because they have the same interests so therefore you know both the house and the Venus person want to talk about the same things. 
And the other thing that can happen with this Venus placement is that the Venus person can kind of view the house person as being quite smart and intelligent. The house person really feels that they are appreciated and feels good that the Venus person flattered, you know, that the Venus person um, really likes their mind and the way they think about things. However, however, you know, because this placement is so light on so many levels, you know, Venus is not necessarily a deep kind of planet. She likes to be pleasant and diplomatic, and the third house is a Gemini house, right? It's a light-hearted house. There is this, um, this thing where the two of you might kind of keep your conversations light and kind of keep your interactions uh, I don't really like to use this word, but maybe it's superficial. So you can talk about like easy things, talk about things that you both feel good when you talk about and kind of not get down to business. <laughs> so like you kind of like, if there's any issues within the relationships, you can kind of gloss over it because it doesn't feel pleasant. You know, Venus likes to feel pleasant, right? So there isn't this need to have to go a little bit deeper and to bring out this courage to face the reality of any issues that you might have going on within the relationship it really does help if there are like more like deeper contacts between the two of you like some nice easy Pluto involved with you know the moon or with Venus nice Pluto um, or the moon is in a, a place that it's doing, it's um, in a deeper place and within the synastry, then that can kind of want to make the two of you understand things about each other that is deeper and to kind of face the truth about what's really going on within the relationship rather than just kind of keeping things pleasant and at the surface level. So the other thing to keep in mind is how mercurial are the two people? You know, if they really don't enjoy uh, um, a, uh, a relationship that in, is involved with so much communication, like if they just prefer to uh, focus more on like building something with another person or focus more on doing things rather than, you know, sitting around and discussing topics and things like that then this this placement can still feel really nice but it's not gonna mean very much like it's not gonna have much value here but you know that all depends on how mercurial and how mercury and venus is aspected and if mercury and venus are aspecting each other within the natal charts of the two people then this can be really nice so you really like this one but if it's not like i mentioned then it's just gonna feel like there needs to be something more yeah this is nice this is nice to get along you know, but what are we really doing together kind of a situation. Yeah, but I think generally, you know, this just is a nice kind of uh, aspect to any relationship um, because you can really find someone that shares common interests with you. So that's the, the really beneficial part of this placement. So. That's my take on Venus and Partners third house. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if you haven't. If you already subscribed, then thank you very much for still coming along with me and with everybody else um, on these astrology journeys that we have together, learning, growing together, and having better relationships with the people around us, especially in the Sinistry series. Okay, guys, have a beautiful day. Bye.